my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So I finally decided to come out and do my exercise uh, and I'm here just outside Rochdale uh, between Rochdale and Bury. Just for your reference, I don't know if anyone of you want to follow me. Edenfield Road is behind the camera and Ashworth Moor Reservoir is just over that way. I think we need to be going this along this path if I'm right and it will take us to the valley that we're interested in. So let's go this way. Right, so I've walked about half a mile now from where I did the intro to this video. What I forgot to mention was we're going to follow the brook, the Cheesden Brook, which runs through the Deeply Vale, uh, the Cheesden Valley. And anyway, I think I've found what I'm looking for. Let's take a look at this. So this is the remains of Cheesden Lum Mill, or Lum Mill. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. Um, quite a fascinating place to be honest with you. I'll give you some dates in a minute on a voiceover. Um, but it looks like, I'm not sure if it was a water driven mill. Certainly they've made every attempt they can to divert all the water towards the mill. Um, this is absolutely amazing, just take a look at this. Okay, so from what I understand about this place, this is Cheesden Lum Lower Mill. It was built around 1786, and it's one of 15 mills that are scattered along the Cheesden Valley. Now, initially this place was a water-powered woolen mill, but over the years um, it was converted and it was uh, changed to a, a cotton spinning mill, and then eventually, towards the end of its life, it was uh, involved in the manufacture of lamp wicks, can you believe? Production eventually ceased around 1890, and from what I understand, and there's very little information, uh, the mill has stood empty since around 1890. Most of the mill is in ruins, complete ruins, but I'm amazed at how much still exists. If this was in Manchester city centre, it would be a long gone, you know, sort of like land being of a premium and everything. It probably just would have been a, something on a map that you looked at and wondered what it looked like. But the fact that it's out here in the moors, it's kind of just been left to fall. And most of it is in ruins, but it's absolutely fantastic. Look at this on this piece of stone. Look where there's been something fixed and anchored there to this thing. That's uh, obviously been some sort of plinth for some big uh, piece of machinery. If you look there, the remains of something that was pinned into that one there. Look over there to the arch. I'll show you something in the arch as well. What gets me about this place is the jump in that early part of the, um, the Industrial Revolution, the jump from cottage industries to this sort of place. What did the people think of it? And can you imagine when the machinery was clattering around in here and they actually brought the Cheesedon Brook through the mill? Um, and, you know, 
in January, February, it would have been in full flow, making a hell of a noise. Was this place seen as a kind of a refuge, a place where you could earn a crust? Or was it, was the mill seen as a dark, satanic place? Anyway, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm just at the base of the, the mill here, waterfalls there, and there's something on the wall here I want to show you. A dolphin. Apparently it was done by a, a local artist. I don't know when, and I don't know why it's a dolphin, but it's very nice. It's quite unusual. My God, it's hot. Um, so we're going to take a walk now down the Cheesden Valley, alongside the Cheesden Brook. The key is keep the brook to the left of you. Apparently that's what I've got to do. Not quite sure where I'm going. Um, but to say it's so remote around here, um, it's fascinating that there's so much, you can see so much intervention, intervention by former generations. Um, like I say, that the earliest part of the uh, industrial revolution this, this place reflects. And everywhere there's just um, evidence of <clears throat> this little brook being um, tampered with and built up and sort of like, They've tried to make it so it, there's little heads of water all along it. Now the Cheesden Brook is about six miles long. It starts life up in the, uh, the moorland and it runs down towards the River Roach. And the River Roach eventually runs into the River Irwell. Everywhere there's the remains of things. You might not be able to see that because of the exposure on the camera. But there's a kind of like a... God knows what. I'll take the other camera around and we'll get a closer look at it. Just keep the Cheesden Brook to the left, Martin. Keep the Cheesden Brook to the left. I think this is the way. <laughs> God knows. I've been walking now for about 20 minutes. just got a signal on my phone um, and this is Deeply Vale Lane. I did look at this on the map before I came and when I tried to drag the man to take a look at what it was like and whether I could drive up here you can see I don't think the Google car came up here but this is Deeply Vale Lane so I don't know where the concert was held back in the uh, 70s in fact it's been held recently hasn't it but uh, it must have been a hell of a place to get to. Now, as I say, this area is called Deeply Vale, and I can't really walk through this area without mentioning the uh, seminal uh, rock festivals that happened here. Apparently, there was the uh, first festivals that brought punk rock to the festival scene. These music festivals were held in 1976, 1977, 1978, 1979, 80 and 81, and then there have been anniversary festivals since Indeed, my favourite band, Orchestral Manoeuvres in the Dark, played here in 1977 in a previous guise to uh, OMD. Uh, they performed as Pegasus. Now, I can't for the life of me think where they actually held the festivals, because as I'm walking through the area, I'm looking and I'm thinking, how the hell would you put a festival here, and who would have access to it? Because, as, you can, as you've seen, it's little tiny lanes. But the Deeply Vale Festivals... Uh, I won't go into all the history of them, but look them up online and they were held in this area. Seminal punk rock events back in the late 70s. Still, onwards and upwards, there's more remains, I think, further down here, but I think it's another mile or so. Now, there's reported to be the remains of about 15 mills along the Cheesden Valley, and, and as I'm walking on my journey, I saw things that could have been mills that were just bits of walls and bits of ruins and they were barely recognisable. Um, <clears throat> and some of the mills that I didn't even walk past, they were on the other side of the valley. But as I'm reading uh, up, trying to get the history of this, I did come across a few uh, anomalies. One of the mills was called um, Croston Close Lower, or it was known locally as Lower Bottoms. And it was 
built and opened in the 1830s. Uh, and apparently the mill was washed away by floodwaters in 1834, which surprises me really on two, two counts because the Cheesden Brook, although, you know, when I was walking by the side of it, it was kind of babbling along. It didn't look like the sort of thing that could wash away a mill. And normally these things are built quite solid out of stone. So yeah, uh, Lower Bottoms Mill was washed away completely in 1834. Right, we're here. Cobbles. Cobbles on the road mark the entrance to industry. That way there, it's unbelievable. It's better than what I even expected. There is the ruins of, of one of the mills that were down here. Over this side, and I'll show you in a sec, is a little lake pond lodge. that was probably used as a water source, but there's an enclave here of just ruined buildings. I'll take you in. This is incredible, absolutely incredible. Right, I've gone handheld on the camera. This place is unbelievable. The ruins of some old mill. It's like some grand castle that was. Look at it. I want to say that little lake, that pond is behind there, behind that wall. And I want to say that those arches probably brought water in, but I don't think they did. Let's go and take a closer look. tranquil places that I've ever been to in my life. Absolute silence, absolute silence, just birds and bees, that's all you can hear. <laughs> so idyllic, but obviously it's the ruins of a, an industrial place. But the contrast is amazing, incredible. But there would have been people that worked here people that endured hardship, daily working life here. And now, 120 years later, guessing, the place has just fell. Now, I don't know if it was an attempt to pull it down, like I say, or whether it's just crumbled. It's difficult because the place is pretty solid. It looks solid. It was uh, a lot of it's stone. But what a tranquil place. There's all sorts of stories about these places um, being reliant on water. So at the minute, we're in a dry period, workers would get laid off. Um, the Cheesden Brook wasn't running. And as soon as there was rain and the Cheesden Brook went into full flow again and the other brooks and the other mills in the area, they were called in. Probably a, a, an allowance made for the Sabbath, but they were called in at all times of day and night. You better get in, there's work. We need to get these machines running. Makes me kind of wonder if at this point in the mill we're below ground level, sort of in a cellar type thing, because there's a kind of a plinth there, a brick plinth with the big pieces of stone on top. And I wonder if that was supporting some kind of machinery, the floor, and then something was anchored there. In the wall, look at that. 
something that turns. My God. It actually turns, it's some sort of mechanism in it. It goes up there. Wow, that is incredible, look at that. Now what on earth was that? Answers on a postcard for what you think that is. That's an amazing find. It's not often you find anything like that. I'm proper thrilled with that. An actual piece of machinery or something that does something. That is incredible. And look, piece of steel there. That's been a girder that, isn't it, going across? If only you could see the way it was, the way it was laid out at the time. Because it's just... Does it fall like this? Did they try and pull it down? I don't know. And did they just leave it as it was? 100 years since these places got abandoned. Maybe a little bit more, 120 years. Now it's just a home for the moss, the flowers, the flies and the bees. So I'm not sure what that is. Bit of a round mark there. Maybe a piece of machinery, who can tell. It's been purposefully cut out for something going round, hasn't it? And again, the whole place is like a big hollow, full of buildings and just ruins and everything. So what is this place that we're looking at? Well, it's been difficult to try and identify these ruins. I've been looking at the old maps and I found a small article and I'm trying to look at the maps and look at the shapes of the reservoirs and match up the ruins with where I am. Um, it has been difficult. So if there's any local historians that spot that I've got anything wrong, I do, I do apologize. But from what I understand, this is uh, Deeply Veil Print Works. It was otherwise known as Hardman's Mill and it was closed in the 1890s. Apparently it had um, two printing machines, a hundred hand block tables for making cloths uh, and they could do three or four different colours. So that's what it was, the Deeply Veiled Print Works. So again it was to treat, um, from what I understand, it was to treat the cotton and the, and the fabric. Now if you look at one of the other maps, if you look at a later map, it comes up as Deeply Dale Paper Mill. So again, I would imagine that its use was changed over the years. Maybe after the 1890, it became the Paper Mill. I'm not sure. Uh, like I say, information is scant. Usually when I make these videos, somebody will then produce something for me and it'll give me all, all the information I need after the video. But that's the limited information I've got. It was the Deeply Vale Print Works obviously um, fabric printing and then later the Deeply Vale paper mill. I wonder if uh, inside this place it looked anything like this. This is a fantastic picture. I've not got a location on this but it just says that it was early 20th century and if you look at this lad here, what is he about 13, 14? Uh, and look at his clogs that he's wearing. Fascinating. Okay, so while I'm reading up on the mills and trying to find information on the mills in the Lancashire, I came across a certain book called The Condition of the Working Classes by uh, Mr. Engels. Anyway, in it, he says this, um, Leach asserts, so I take it this is one of the 
the, the one of the sources he used. Leach asserts of one print works in Deeply Dale near Bury in Lancashire that the hand printers did not earn on average more than five shillings, though he knows that the machine printers are pretty well paid. Uh, and it goes on to say, they produce an article subject to fashion and have therefore no regular work. If they have small orders, they work half time. If they make a hit with a pattern and business is brisk, they work 12 hours, perhaps all night. Right, so fantastic ruin. So we'll move on. Uh, the Cheesden Brook is to my left. Keep the brook to your left. <laughs> So yes, the Cheesden Brook is to my left. I'm going to walk further down the valley, which looks quite, uh, we've gone from sort of moorland now, which was where we started the video, and now we're more sort of, um, sort of wooded. It's quite beautiful to be honest with you, perfect day for it. But I think further down the valley here, cut off from everything, because I, again, I worked out, tried to work out a way of driving here, and it's just not doable. Um, is another little gem that I'll show you. Um, again, the remains of something, but this one has got something unique to mark it out. So let's walk down the valley amongst the uh, cheese and brook to the left and amongst the bluebells. <laughs> Right, we're here. This is where I want to be. If you can just see over there, something in the woods. Uh, so I think we need to go across the brook now. There's a little bridge over there, we'll go to the bridge. But first, the road goes steeply upwards. So let's take the path upwards over the bridge and then go and take a look at the finale of our monuments in the woods. Now before we go and take a look at that gem, the uh, Cheesden Brook has a little picturesque little bridge there, if you can see it. So let's go down there and just take a quick look at it. What gets me about this is, look at the dressed stone there. Look at the dressed stone, that is probably from the uh, mill we're about to look at. Another piece there. I know, no, I've learned through my travels that that is dressed stone. And if you look under here, there's more. Incredible. And if you look at that there, another rather decorative piece there. That is wonderful, isn't it? And I bet all washed down from the uh, mill that we're about to look at, or the remains of the building we're about to look at. Again, I tried to uh, look at the map to see if I could drive here or drive near to it, <laughs> like you do. But again, I'm so glad that I didn't because it's such a beautiful way, the way we've come, absolutely fantastic. And this for me is the gem. Uh, I'll turn the camera around now. You can just see the top of it. I'll just show you.
Look at that. I do love a good chimney. Another place of absolute silence. So I read about this thing. Beautiful thing to find in such a secluded spot. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? And I'd seen pictures of it and I knew it was down here somewhere, but I weren't sure all that way whether I was going to find it, whether I was going to get lost or not, but found it. Fantastic. A chimney on its own in the middle of the woods and just around it is its ruins of its the, the, the works that it was. So apparently this pipe, this almost just still intact pipe uh, is original, it's what fed the water into the works. Just behind there is a little uh, lake, a little pond. And again, it's probably a head of water that they've created to uh, give water to the works. Hopefully by now I've told you what this place is. But look at this. You know when people buy them things, those apps that just play water and birdsong, just come here in summer. The place is unbelievable. Okay, so what was this place? Well, apparently this is Lower Wheel Mill. It was also known as Wash Wheel Mill. It was built in the second part of the 19th century and in the 1880s, it was uh, used for the bleaching of cotton waste. Um, apparently it was the last mill to close in the valley in 1919. Again, uh, one source is saying it was known as Wash Wheel Mill. If you look at one of the old maps, it's also saying that it was called um, Deeply Vale Bleach Works. But either way, it sounds like it was a, a, a treatment plant. Um, I think the, the chimney, uh, I've read somewhere, and I can't find the source. You know, when you find something, then you lose it. I think it had a Lancashire boiler, and that's why it's got the, the, the chimney stack still standing. But amazing that the mill has fallen or it's been pulled down. And I imagine that chimney stack just proved to be too much of a problem to drop or they've made a half-hearted attempt to drop it. But in the end, it's just stood there and it's fantastic that it is still stood there, to be honest with you. And again, in the paving slabs, you can see cutouts where there was probably machines mounted um, and things bolted down. It's amazing. Apparently, from what I've been reading, a lot of these places that we've seen are from the early part of the Industrial Revolution. I think they measure it in two parts. There's the early part, which was kind of like late 1700s to the early 1800s, and that's where these date from. Two parts of the uh, Industrial Revolution as, as, that I'm learning as a layperson. Um, a lot of the stuff in Manchester that we look at, the mills and things, seem to be the later part of the Industrial Revolution, the 18, sort of like mid 1800s onwards. Well, this is uh, the really early stuff. And that said, eventually, these places out here in the, in the hills that were cut off from everywhere, they couldn't compete with the industry that was taking place and the explosion of industry and mechanisation that was taking place down in Manchester and in the cities. And so these places out here secluded that had their own problems with getting what they produced transported into where it was needed, eventually these places fell into disrepair and that's why I think over the years they've changed function from one thing to another as they try to survive. Now apparently there's more just somewhere around here there's the Nadenbrook and if you follow the Nadenbrook, that's got lots of uh, um, remains of mills and things like that along it. So maybe I should do that one as well. Well, this has been incredible, unbelievable. Like I say, last year I was doing, I found all that railway stuff, the engine shed and the turntable. And uh, this year turned up trumps again. Despite everything that's going on, we've found an absolute gem hidden in the woods. Amazing. Another one of those mills that got washed away was Cobb House Nab Mill, apparently. Um, the mill was washed away in 1828 um, in a storm, and so they decided to rebuild it. During that rebuilding, a Mr. Earnshaw, who uh, owned the mill, the new owner of the mill, was killed after he fell into the gearing. What an absolutely horrendous death. 
So there you go, the remains of some old industry in the Cheesedon Valley. So from one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to, which is actually just on my doorstep, I never thought this existed. Um, from the Cheesedon Brook, from Deeply Vale, and from the remains of the old mills, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I shall see you very soon in the next video. Bye for now.